What's up guys, it's Rob here and today we need to talk about Sundial stock, ticker symbol SNDL. There is a lot to cover today. We need to talk about legalization in a couple of different states, some major changes to the short interest, as well as the upcoming merger that's going to be happening very soon for Sundial. So we'll jump right in. We'll start taking a look at the chart very briefly, just to show that Sundial earlier today was actually seeing some bullish pressure. And I was thinking that potentially that could have been a continuation of this uptrend that we've been on for the past week. However, it's looking like it turned around. It looks like we may be moving down potentially 62 cents will act as support. We'll have to see. It definitely acted as some kind of support in the pre-market. We bounced off of it. So we'll see if we can bounce off of it again. It looks like we just did a couple of minutes ago and now we're potentially moving up, but we'll have to see what happens with Sundial's price short term. Long term, I'm not too worried about it because of the great news that we've caught coming out for Sundial over the past couple of days. We have had legalization talks in a couple of different states. First off, New Hampshire lawmakers are filing multiple marijuana legalization bills. So New Hampshire lawmakers are getting ready for a very busy session when it comes to marijuana policy with several bills being proposed in recent days, including one from key Republican committee chairman and other leaders. So they have six different measures to legalize cannabis for adult use that have been pre-filed for 2022. So it's looking like we'll probably see that in New Hampshire, at least three of those bills, right? Three of those measures are actually going to try to put the question directly in front of voters, right? They don't want to leave it up to chance that the Senate in New Hampshire does the right thing. They want to just put it in front of voters. And we've seen time and time again, every time voters get the chance to vote for legalization on the ballot, we've seen in polls, they tend to vote for legalization. So if it does actually end up getting put on the ballot in New Hampshire in front of voters, then we'll probably see it. Now, the bills that they're offering are as most bills in the United States are only going to legalize it for adults 21 years and older. And it's interesting, actually, in this bill, home cultivation would continue to be criminalized. So it's interesting. It's actually probably a good thing for cannabis businesses, right? Because then people won't be growing it at home. They'll actually have to go out to the dispensary and get it. At least fewer people would be growing it at home than would be if it was legal to do so. So it'll be interesting to see how states deal with that issue, right? If they're end, if they're going to end up allowing a lot of home cultivation or as New Hampshire is potentially considering not allowing home cultivation. So that's actually, while it is a limit to people's freedom, probably a good thing for the stocks, right? The cannabis stocks would actually benefit fit from that if home cultivation was illegal. So it would be a boon in some ways, but also kind of a hit to the cannabis community who wanted to potentially grow their own stuff. They maybe don't want to worry about what kind of pesticides people are using. They just want it to be organic grown at home. Potentially it's going to limit their freedoms. But overall for cannabis stocks like Sundial, it's probably going to be pretty good for them, right? If these kinds of bills are what end up going through in different states. Now we also have a bill in Indiana where GOP or Republican lawmakers are also filing legalization bills. So a Republican Indiana lawmaker announced that she will be introducing a bill to legalize cannabis, both for recreational and medical use. Also, it would just apply to adults 21 and older as pretty much every bill in the United States does. And this would be mirroring the neighboring state of Michigan's cannabis laws. So they're essentially just taking Michigan's cannabis laws and making them their own if this bill ends up going through. And it would also, once again, establish a medical program. And we don't know quite yet what the text of the bill is going to look like. But once again, this is not the most important part, right? It doesn't matter specifically what each state is saying about legalization. What we really care about is this overall trend that Indiana, New Hampshire, a bunch of other states are legalizing cannabis. And you can actually see on the map right here where cannabis is legal, what states it's legal in. And you can see the states that are outlined in black are where it's fully legal. Green is some form of legalization or decriminalized, which typically... Uh, amounts to not very much, right? When you're looking at these green states, there it's either decriminalized and uh, cannabis companies cannot operate there, right? Because it's not legal, it's just decriminalized and you won't actually be sent to jail for possessing cannabis or it's medical use only. So if it's a darker green, medical use only, and really you're not getting that many medical patients, right? There's some medical need for it, but it's still kind of tough to get. And overall, you see a lot more consumption of cannabis when it's fully legal than you do when it's just medically legal. So there are still even a bunch of gray states where there's only CBD use, still a couple of orange ones hanging out where it's fully illegal, even CBD. But these gray states are pretty much nothing, right? The, the CBD only, I mean, who is using that, right? So, I mean, maybe there's some people, but overall, we're waiting for this whole map to become black. I think that that's probably going to be the trend that we see going into 2022. I think a lot more of these states are going to become black, especially as the issue is put 
uh, in front of voters, right? I think a lot more people are going to vote to legalize cannabis rather than keep it decriminalized or for medical use only. And we're already seeing that. People are pre-filing bills to get this stuff pushed through. People are considering putting bills in front of voters so that voters can decide for themselves. And we're about to take a look at the very interesting change that we saw in short interest right after we look at the channel analytics. Currently, we have 8,796 subscribers. So we're really only four away from 8,800 subscribers. I would love to get there. So potentially, if someone's willing to hit the subscribe button, we only need four people to do it to get us to 8,800. So I would really greatly appreciate that. If anyone would subscribe to the channel, if you guys appreciate Sundial Stock News, then feel free to subscribe because we certainly talk about Sundial Stock a lot on the channel. Now, the change that we've seen with short interest did not happen today. It must have happened over the break while I was away over Christmas. But we actually only have 291 million shares short, which is a significant change from the 300 40 million shares short that we had right before break. So well, the, the change has essentially changed by about 50 million. So it's pretty significant what we've seen. Uh, far fewer people are now shorting Sundial than were before. This is potentially because people, uh, institutions that were shorting it, are looking to get out of their short positions on Sundial before 2022 hits, right? They may not want to be holding Sundial stock as a short position in 2022, knowing that there are all of these legalization catalysts, knowing that there's a high likelihood that we'll see federal legalization before all these midterms come out, and we'll probably see a lot more shorts exiting in 2022, but a lot of them may have to panic to get out, right? They may have to cut their position short uh, and end up buying up Sundial shares when they don't want to, when the price has risen, they might end up getting squeezed out of it. If we see a big rise in Sundial stock price, it could be very bad for some of the shorts in there. Now, this article, for some reason, isn't loaded, but for whatever reason, it was going to talk about the Alcana acquisition. So basically, the Alcana acquisition has been pushed back. We already talked about this. It was originally supposed to happen sometime in December. It's been pushed back now to early 2022. For those of you who don't know, though, Alcana is an alcohol brand. Canada's largest private liquor retailer, and they are being acquired by Sundial. Now, Sundial only got, uh, or rather Alcana, only got enough votes. Uh, about 56% of the vote came in, and they need about 65%. So that's why they decided to delay the Alcana acquisition meeting. So we're going to see that meeting happen on January 7th now. And that is when Alcana shareholders are going to come together and vote whether or not to go through with the merger with Sundial. So I expect this merger will probably go through. The reason they delayed the merger vote was because they needed some more time to collect some more votes, and they only needed about 10% of the votes to show up, right? So I expect that they'll probably have that by January 7th. So something that you'll want to keep your eye on is January 7th. You'll want to watch out for the Alcana acquisition. We'll definitely be covering it on the channel when it goes through. Hopefully, Sundial will end up acquiring Alcana because that would be a great acquisition for them to have. It would diversify their portfolio. They wouldn't just be in cannabis. They would then be in alcohol as well. So that would be a good diversification for them. So we'll be keeping a close eye on Sundial stock around the 7th. We could probably expect the stock price to be moving up around then is my expectation, right? On news of this big merger, it'll get buzz surrounding Sundial stock. So people will potentially be looking to Sundial stock where they haven't in the past. They may notice that it is relatively cheap, that they have a bunch of cash on the balance sheet if they bother to look into the fundamentals. And they'll recognize that they just acquired Canada's largest private liquor retailer. So other than that, guys, that's what I've got for you on Sundial stock. That, those are the key things that we're going to be watching for. One, legalization in the States. Two, Alcana acquisition. Three, the short interest is going down. That's a good sign, in my opinion. We don't want all the shorts to escape. We want some of them to get squeezed out. But it is good to see that some of potentially the smarter, savvier shorts are escaping before 2022 and potentially a big rise in Sundial occurs. So other than that, guys, take into account none of this is financial advice. I'm not recommending to anyone to buy or, or sell any shares of any kind of stock. I'm just giving you guys my opinion as well as some of the news surrounding Sundial stock. So if you enjoy, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more. Like the video, that's much appreciated. And other than that, guys, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.